Hey guys, I'm back with part 4 for this tutorial on how to build this mansion. Here in this one, I'm going to be doing the landscaping for the front and backyard. I gathered up all the blocks we're using here for the front yard, so be sure to grab some spruce wood pressure plates, stripped dark oak logs, podzel, coarse dirt, jungle leaves, andesite, stone bricks, gravel, smooth quartz slabs, smooth quartz stairs, and smooth quartz blocks bucket of water, and then a bunch of flowers of your choice, and I'm also going to be using a melon. These will all be used for the little garden areas that we have. I'm going to start by shaping out the garden spaces first, so be sure to grab the stripped dark oak log. We'll head on over here towards the left, make sure you're lined up here at the corner of the house, and we're just going to start digging out the shape. So go ahead and carve out three like that, and then you could go in from the corner carve out two and then one and now kind of work your way towards the right so pretty much towards the middle part of the house and you could go ahead and do another two and then go out and do three and then two one and two let's do a few more so we have one right there where we left off and then two and three I'm going to go ahead and fill all of this in with the logs facing up and then I'll go up above and you'll be able to see exactly what I've just done. And with the logs facing up it'll then make it easier to count all of the spaces. So here you go, I'll look straight down, you can maybe pause the video. Now let's just continue on, so we're pretty much going to be doing the second half of the shape towards this right side. So just go from the corner of that three we just placed, we're going to start working our way back in towards the house. So you could carve out two, and then one, and now pretty much just work your way towards the house, so we have two like that, and then we have three, and then four. And where this 4 is, should be lined up where the deep slate tile is here for the left side of this window. And I'll go ahead and fill all of this in. And now from up above, we have our first shape. Now let's start doing the second shape that we're going to have here. It'll be smaller and it's actually going to be raised up. So we're just going to be placing the blocks instead of carving it into the ground. So, make sure you're lined up here at the left side of this window where this deep slate tile is. And you could just start by placing two away from the house like that. And then go towards the left, place one. And then another three. Go back in, place one. Go in again towards the left, place another two. And then from right here, place three. And then we're going to have one and one until you meet up at the house again. So from up above, this is what the second shape is looking like. Now, let's go ahead and cover up all these logs with these spruce pressure plates. And now let's start filling in all of this space with the podzel and the coarse dirt. So I'll start with the raised up area. And I'll just pretty much place the podzel randomly, and then all the remaining space will fill in with the coarse dirt. So, it is looking like this. Now for the rest of the space, let's just go ahead and carve out all the grass and that little bit of concrete that you see within the shape, and we'll do the same thing we just did there. So I'm going to go ahead and just completely fill it all in with a podzel first, and then what I'm going to do is just go back with the coarse dirt, just cut out a bunch of random holes and fill it in. I feel like that'll be a little bit quicker. So now, this is what it's looking like. So everything that we just did here, we're then going to go and do over here on this right side. So I'm pretty much just going to look at this side and match it up. 
So you can see we started, we have three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two. So I'll go to this side. I'll go to the corner. So we have three, two, one, two. And then we have another three, two, one, and two. I believe that's how it was. Yep. All right. And then we have one, two, and three. So we have one, two, and three. So all you have to do is just look at that side and match it up over here. You can maybe even rewatch that part in order to do this side. But anyway, there we go. I have the first half of the shape like that. And now I can see we have two, one, two, three, and four. So, two, one, two, three, and four. This is the entire lower shape. And now let's go ahead and do the one that's raised up. So we're lined up with that part of the window. We have two, one, three, one, and two. So we start right here. Two, one, three, one, two. And then I remember it is three, one, and one. Like that. Now, uh, I'll just go ahead and cover up all these logs with the pressure plates and then fill in all of the space with the coarse dirt and podzel. So I'll just see you guys once I have all of that done. And there we go. Now this side is done. Now make sure you have the jungle leaves and I'm going to start shaping out the driveway. So I'm going to head on over here at this left side. And you can see how we have this space of three that juts out here. We're going to line up towards the left side of it. And we'll just place three of the leaves like that going out. And then we'll go to the corner here. Place five. And then work your way back in. Place another three. And then we're going to go in again. Place two. And then one. And one. So that is part of the shape here for the driveway so far. Now let's continue on. We'll just go from this corner of the one and we'll place another two. And then we have three and then two again. And now we're gonna pretty much turn until we're at the edge of the plot size. So we have two right there. And then we leave off with three and the final block should be right on top of the plot size. So, we have the left side of the driveway shaped out like that. Now what we're going to do is head on over here towards this right side and do the exact same thing. So we're going to be here at this, like where the space of three is, we're going to be at the right side of it. And we'll bring this out by three. We'll go out from that, bring it out by five. Go back in, do another three. And then we have two one and one and it should match up so far yep all right and then we have two in that direction and then three another two and then we have two pretty much going out that way and then another three right there so from up above this is what we have so far now what I'm going to do is pretty much just delete all of the rest of the grass that you see here as well as that little bit of concrete. So all of the space throughout here. Alright, so I'll see you guys once I have this all cut out. Let me go ahead and fix that real quick. There we go. I don't think I accidentally deleted. Oh yeah, let's go ahead and replace these little bits of yellow concrete. We won't worry about the rest of it for now. We'll take care of that last. Uh, but so far, that's all looking good. Okay. So, this is what it's looking like so far. We just deleted that first layer. 
So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is grab the andesite, the stone bricks, and the gravel, and just do a random pattern between these three. So similar to how we did the podzol and the corister, you can see how we just mix those up. Now we're going to be doing the same thing with these three blocks. Okay, so I'm just going to start by completely filling it all in with the andesite first. And then I'll just go back and carve out a bunch of random holes. I'll fill it in with the stone bricks. And then I'll go back one more time, carve out more holes, and fill it in with the gravel. So I'll see you guys once I have it done. And then we'll go ahead and do the fountain. So now I just finished going through and filling that all in with the andesite, diorite, or my bad, not diorite, just the andesite, the stone bricks, and the gravel. So now we're going to go right down the middle area right around here, and we're going to start shaping out the fountain. So for the fountain, make sure you have some full blocks of the smooth quartz, smooth quartz stairs, smooth quartz slabs, and a bucket of water. You can switch to the full blocks of the smooth quartz. And just look at where this front porch is. Make sure you're lined up right down the center of it. We're going to start right here. And you could just pretty much work your way until you're towards the center of the driveway. So we're going to be on the 14th block. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And you can bring up a pillar of six with the full blocks of smooth quartz. So it is like that so far. Now you can switch to the smooth quartz stairs. And we're going to be placing these on each side of the pillar. So we'll just start right here. We're going to be skipping over three spaces. So we're on the fourth block. You can place a stair like that. And then one on each side. So it's pretty much lined up with the pillar. We'll go on this side, we'll skip over three, so we're on the fourth. Do the same thing right there. You could just do the same for the other two sides. So we have one there, and right here. And now, let's go ahead and grab the full blocks of the smooth quartz, and we're gonna be placing two in each corner. Like that. And now you could grab your smooth quartz slabs and we're going to be placing three of these. So one here, here, and here. Just like that in each corner. So this is what it's looking like so far. Now let's switch back to our smooth quartz stairs. And we're going to be on the third block of where this pillar is. So you can see how we're just leaving two spaces of the full blocks at the top. And we're going to be placing upside down smooth quartz stairs like this. And now all of the other space within the shape of the fountain we just made is going to be filled in with smooth quartz blocks. So we're just going to carve all of this out and replace it with the smooth quartz like this. And now, let's go ahead and grab our bucket of water. We'll just pour it right there. It all flows down. And then one little thing I like to do is pretty much just add more buckets here. So that this isn't flowing. It's just like solid. And I think that is all good. Yep. Alright. So that's about it for the fountain. I'll leave it like that. And now the final thing we're actually going to do up here in the front yard are the flowers and bushes for the garden spaces. So I'll just clear everything that we have right here in our inventory. We'll also get rid of all of these blocks. Oh wait, we'll get rid of that grass block as well. And then let's go ahead and grab all of these other items. So I'll start with the jungle leaves. I'm just going to start shaping out some bushes. So I'll maybe have one up here in this corner. So you could just use these jungle leaves and kind of shape it out until it looks pretty much like natural. And I think that'll be fine. And we can maybe have another one right around here. And another maybe right here. So I'll go ahead and just place all of these random. 
So a little something here. Maybe get rid of that one. There we go. I think that's good. And then we'll do the same thing right around here. And you know what? I think that is good. Maybe an extra one. There we go. Okay. Now let's grab the melons. We'll just have a few of these. We don't want to overdo it. So maybe one right there. Another right there. One more here. And maybe one back here. And then we'll also have another one on the raised area. Right there. And now all the other space is going to be the flowers. So we'll grab the bigger flowers first. That's usually what I like to start with. And we'll just place all of these. And then we'll switch to the next one. Continue on. And then with the final big one. And now we'll just continue on with these three. So we have the Lily of the Valley, the Fern, and the Blue Orchid. And obviously you don't have to use these exact flowers. You can pretty much just use whatever you want. So I'll leave it at that here for this right side. I think that looks pretty good. Now pretty much exactly what we've just done here. We're then going to do over here on this side and then the front yard will be how I want it. So I'll just go ahead and do all of this and I'll see you guys once I have it done. And now I have this side done. And I'm going to go ahead and pretty much leave it at that. Now the final thing we do have to do is just remove all of the extra concrete for the plot size. We're not going to be needing that anymore. But I'll worry about that last. Let's actually just head right on to the backyard. And we'll start doing everything back here. So we have a pool, a tennis court, and a basketball court. So I went ahead and gathered up all the main blocks we're going to be using here for the backyard. So be sure to grab the stripped dark oak logs, the spruce pressure plates, podzel, coarse dirt, stone bricks, gravel, andesite, white concrete, gray concrete, light gray concrete, white concrete, and green concrete, and then some dark oak fences, cobwebs, smooth quartz slabs, buckets of water, hopper, diorite wall, and black stained glass panes. So I'm gonna start with the stripped dark oak logs and I'm gonna shape out the garden areas. So I'll start over here at this right side and these ones are gonna be raised up. They're not gonna be like in the ground. So we'll start here at the corner of the house and we're gonna place three and then we'll do two, one, and then two in that direction. And then another three. And then we have four. And then we're going to go back in and have another four. So we have this shape over here. We'll go ahead and do the same thing on this side. So we have three. And then two. One. Two. Three. Four. And then back in with another four. Now let's cover all of these up with the spruce pressure plates. And then within the shape here, we'll go ahead and fill it in with the coarse dirt and the podzel, just like how we did it at the front. Alright, so there we go. I just marked out those two garden spaces, and we'll worry about decorating them later. Now, I actually want to head on to the main part of the backyard, which is the pool, basketball court, and tennis court. And now, here for the backyard, you can see this first layer of all of this space here we're going to be deleting. And you can see the edge of the plot size all the way back here is how far we have to bring it back. So, if you did the plot size, you'll know exactly where to bring it. If you didn't, 
I guess I'll go ahead and count it, but I would recommend in the future if you didn't do the plot size, just go ahead and do it. It'll make things a lot easier. And then you'll know for sure that everything is placed exactly how it should be. So, I'll just start up here. And I'm just going to count it. Yeah, I'll make it quick. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, and 38. So now we're right here at the edge of the plot size. So you can just start there and just delete a strip of 38. All right. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing on this side, and all I'll do is just pretty much bring it all the way towards the edge, all the way back here. And now, you could just go all the way to the other side, delete all of this, pretty much connect it together. And now, all of this space within that shape we just cut out, we are going to be deleting. And just make sure not to forget about all of this space underneath the deck here. So make sure to get right up under here and delete all of this as well. And yeah. So, I'll see you guys once I have it all cut out. And then we'll start pretty much adding everything that we're going to have back here. And there we go. I deleted the first layer of all the space back here. So now I'm going to start shaping out where the basketball court, the tennis court, and the pool is going to be. So we're going to be using all of the concrete blocks that we grabbed earlier. I'm going to start by marking out where the basketball court is going to be first. So make sure you have your white concrete and we're going to be over here at this right side. And we're going to be placing a 15 by 25 block rectangle. So we'll start over here at this back corner. We just want to make sure to leave one space on each side of the hole that we cut out here. So we're going to place a block of white concrete right there. And now work your way over towards the left and place another 14. So it'll be 15 in total, including this one. So there we go. That is 15. And now we're going to work our way towards the house. We'll just start right here. We're going to place an additional 24. Since we already have one here, so it'll be a total of 25. So there we go. Now, let's go ahead and bring over another strip right here so that it's lined up with that backside. And it'll be right there. So now, you can see... We pretty much have two blocks here until we meet up at the corner of the white concrete. So we have two spaces and then we meet up at the edge of the deck here. All right. And now let's go ahead and connect these together. There we go. So we have the shape for where the basketball court is going to be marked out. So this is how big it's going to be. So now let's mark out where the three point lines are going to be. So I'll just start over here at this side. We're going to be on the third block. So we're leaving two spaces. So we're on this third block. And we'll place four like that. Then we'll go from the corner of that. We'll have two. And then one. And three. We'll do the same on this side. So we're starting on the third block. We'll place four. And then we have two. And one. And it connects into the three. We'll go ahead and do the same. Oh wait, first, let's mark out where the free throw line is going to be. So we're going to be at the back side of where the space of two is. And we'll just bring a line straight across like that. So we'll do the same on this side. We have four here. We'll do the same here. And then we'll go in. We have two, two, and then one, and one. And then we leave off with three to connect it together. And then we have our free throw line. Like that. Now, right down the middle, let's have our half court line. And there should be three spaces away from the edge of the 
three point line here as well as for this side so it's right down the middle now the scrub is the red concrete i'm just going to fill in all of the space within the three point line and then everything else will be gray concrete so i figured the red concrete will be a nice little touch adds a bit of color So now all of the other space that you see will be filled in with the gray concrete. And there we go. We have the main basketball court all marked out and looking good. And since we're at it, we might as well go ahead and do the basketball hoops. So make sure to grab the diorite walls, the black stained glass panes, and the hopper. And we're also going to be using the red concrete again. So, switch to the diorite right wall. We're just going to be right on the center of the three-point line, right on top of this white concrete line. And you could just bring up a pillar of five with the wall. Just like that. We'll go ahead and place a red concrete block. And then we'll have the backboard. So we're going to have two spaces of black stained glass panes on each side and then a layer along the top. Like this. And now grab your hopper. And what I like to do is just pretty much go down all the way here. I'll just crouch and I'll place the hoppers and jump up until we reach right underneath the red concrete block. So now that's like the rim. So there we go. That is the basketball hoop. We'll do it over here again. So we have the pillar of five. And then we'll have the red concrete block right there. The two layers of the glass on each side. And then along the top. And then we'll go down here. We'll crouch and jump until we are right underneath that concrete block. So, that's all looking good. We actually have the entire basketball court all done. I'm going to head on over to this side and shape out where the tennis court is going to be. So make sure to switch back to your white concrete and we'll start by doing the border of the tennis court. So at that side, you can see how we left one space at the back. Over here, we're going to be leaving two spaces and we're going to continue with the one space here at the side. So we're going to be placing a block of white concrete right here. So we just have one space here and then two spaces here. And we're going to be placing a 15 once again by 23 in length. So it'll be 15 blocks wide again. So let's go ahead and do that. So we just have to add an additional 14 next to that. So we have a total of 15 right there. And now we just want to add on another 22. So it'll be 23 in total going towards the house. So it's a couple blocks shorter than how that basketball court is. And there we go, actually. That is where it should be. So another 22 additional ones over here on this side. We'll line it up. All right. And then you can see we have three spaces remaining here until we meet up with the edge of the deck. So over on this side, we have the two spaces. And in this case, on this side, it'll be three. All right. Now let's go ahead and connect this together. So we have the main shape here for the tennis court. So once again, it is 15 by 23. That over there is 15 by 25. Now let's continue with the white concrete and on each side from the front to the back, we're just gonna have a strip like this. So now the empty space here is going to be the outer bounds area for the sides. So we'll do the same right here. And then let's go ahead in the other direction like this. We just want to make sure we're on the fifth block. So we're skipping over these four spaces here at the back. So we're on the fifth. We'll have a line going in this direction. And we'll do the same on this side. So right here. And now let's go right down the middle in between these spaces. And have a line like this. And then right down the middle, once again, 
We'll have another line so this is like the half court line and we'll bring this all the way through. So from up above, this is what the tennis court should be looking like. Now all of the other space, we're going to fill in with green concrete. And there we go, this is what we have so far. And you know what, the final thing we really have to do for the tennis court is the net. So I'm going to be using the dark oak fence and the cobweb. So grab your dark oak fence, we'll place this on each side where the half court line is. And then for all the space in the middle, we're going to fill in with the cobwebs for the actual net. And that's all we're going to be doing for the tennis court, so that's all good. Now the final thing we're going to do back here is the pool. And I'm actually going to go ahead and switch up the design because this is what the original is looking like. And yeah, it does have a bit of a different shape to it, like more rounded off. And it's just a little bit different, but I really don't like it actually. So what I'm going to do is just leave it simple and have a rectangular shape over here. I think it'll just look better. So I'm going to go ahead and try to come up with a design real quick, pretty much figure out how big I actually want it, and I'll see you guys in a second. Alright, so I think this is the design that I'm actually going to stick with, so I'll be sure to count all the blocks so you know exactly how to do it. But just so you know what it's actually going to be looking like, I think I like this a lot more than the original one over there. So let's go ahead and get to counting all the blocks. So I actually cut out an extra layer down and just marked out where the pool is going to be. So now I could actually place it along with you guys. So you just want to make sure to place it at the same layer, like the same height as the main level of the world. So it'll be at the same height as the tennis court and the basketball court. So I'll start here at this back side where the long strip is. And we just want to make sure we're five spaces away from the basketball court over here. So you can see we have five spaces. And then we have five spaces away from the back side of where the backyard actually ends. So we just have five spaces here. And then we're also going to have five spaces away from the edge of the tennis court. So I'll just head back over here and we're going to be placing 25 blocks. So there we go. We have a strip of 25. And once again, five spaces here, five spaces here, and five spaces here. So now let's fill in this side here. We're going to be placing an additional 16, including this space that we already have here. It'll be 17 in total for this side. But we already have the one, so we're going to start right here and place an additional 16 towards the house. So now we have this L shape marked out so far. Let's go over to this side and fill this in. And I'll actually be sure to count it with you guys. So we're going to start right here and place 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. We already had the 1 there, but from corner to corner, it's actually 13 in total for this side here. And now... Let's go ahead and do this section. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that pretty much just goes back in towards the back side. And now we'll go to the left of that right here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And now we'll connect this together here. So we have an additional one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. But from corner to corner, we already had these ends, so it's actually 11 in total for this entire side. And then we have the hot tub right here, which is just 4 here. And then another 3, so it's pretty much like a 4x4 four four right here where the cell shape is. And now we actually just want to add an additional layer on top of this. So now this shapes out where the hot tub is, which is now a five by five square. Okay, so this is the shape for the pool. 
and I was going to be using the light gray concrete for the floor of the pool, but I'm actually just going to go ahead and use the gray concrete, so we're not going to be using the light gray. So, let's go ahead and grab the gray, and we'll just go right here within the hot tub first, and just fill in a layer right here. And now let's go ahead and do the rest of the pool. So we're going to be deleting an extra layer. So I'll just go... Let's see, we'll go ahead and bring this over. We're going to be going down in levels. So I'll bring this over till right around here. So this section will be the shallow end. So we'll go ahead and just delete this first layer that we see. And now you can just go ahead and fill all of this in. So that's the first layer of the pool right there. Now I'm going to go down on the next layer. So we're going to be deleting two. And now you can see for my world, I actually am already at the bedrock level. And I am in the bedrock version here on PS4. You can see how I can actually delete the bedrock. So if that's your case, you could actually delete it and you're on just a regular flat world. Then you could go ahead and just make the pool as deep as you want it. And then obviously if you're on a custom world where you made your world a lot deeper, then once again, you'll be able to just make the pool as deep as you want. But I'm going to go ahead and delete all of the rest of the layers of dirt that we have within the pool here. And in my case, I'm actually going to delete the layer of the bedrock so that we could actually make the pool one block deeper. So it'll be three levels instead of just the two. So now I deleted all of the dirt. And you can see how I actually already have two layers of white concrete here for the side walls. If you're looking at yours, you probably only have one so far. The reason I have this one is because I ended up marking out where the pool is going to be. And then I placed this layer with you guys. So we will actually be filling in the side walls with the white concrete like this. But first, let's go ahead and do the layers. So let's continue with the gray concrete. And we'll do this second layer here. Now bring this over until we're about here let's go ahead and continue on now i think i'll actually stop it we'll bring it over one more so we have the first layer here the second layer and then this will be the third layer and like i said i'm gonna go ahead and actually delete the bedrock and replace it with the gray concrete if you can't do this then you could go ahead and just cover all of this up with the gray concrete for the same layer as this part here. And there we go. This is what it's looking like. And now you can see we have to replace some more of the dirt here with the white concrete. That's about all there is to it. Just make sure these side walls are entirely white concrete like this. So in my case, it's three layers. All right. And then here we have two layers and then just the one layer there. So this is actually pretty much it for the pool. We just have to fill it in with the water. And I really like this design a lot more than that other one. So I'm actually just going to clear all of these blocks. And I'll clear all this as well. And, the, and this here. So now the only blocks... Wait, do we need this? Oh yeah. So we need the smooth quartz slabs, and then we have the stone bricks, the gravel, and the andesite, and then you could also grab a bucket of water. So let's go ahead with the water and fill in the pool first. And there we go, I went ahead and filled in the pool, so this is what it's looking like. So I'll just get rid of that bucket of water. And now all of the other space that you see we're going to go ahead and fill in with the stone bricks, the gravel, and the andesite. So, I'll actually just go ahead and do that, and I'll pretty much just see you guys once I have it done. So you could just fill in all of the remaining space around the edge of the quartz, and around the edge of the pool. And make sure not to forget about these little spaces underneath the deck as well. 
So I'm just going to go through with the andesite first and completely fill it all in. And then I'll go back and carve out the holes for the other blocks. So, like I said, I'll see you guys once I have it all done and then we'll carry on to what we're going to do next. So I just finished up by filling in all of this space. And this all looks pretty good. So, now we have these smooth quartz slabs. I'm going to be using these for like tanning beds around the edge of the pool. And I'm actually not sure how many we're going to be able to fit. But I wanted some right here. And then maybe some on this back side. And that'll be about all. So, let's go ahead and see if we could have... So we're pretty much going to be doing two slabs stacked up like that and then two right here. And that's about it for the design. And we have a total of 20, no we have 17 blocks here. So I'm not sure if we're going to be able to have the, uh, the tanning beds like perfectly even along this side. But let's see how this looks with them all two spaces apart. Oh wait, actually, there we go, that actually worked out. So we have two spaces away from the edge of the pool right here. We have one, two, three, four, and five. They're all two spaces apart, and then we leave off with another two, two spaces here at this back side. So that worked out actually pretty good. And then here, I'll go ahead and have them um, like spaced out further. So let's see. So we'll continue with the two spaces away from the edge here. I'll go ahead and do the same on this side. And then I'm thinking maybe having them like three spaces apart. Let's see if that'll work out. Oh, okay, yep, there we go. So we have two spaces away from the edge on each side. And then they're all going to be three spaces apart. So this actually worked out pretty good. And there we go. And then right here, I maybe just want a table with some chairs. And then we're going to have a grill up here on the deck. And then we still have to add our decorations for the garden spaces. And that's pretty much about it. So, let me just go ahead and clear all that. And first, let's go ahead and do the garden spaces. So, I actually just grab everything from the front. So, we have the jungle leaves, the melons, and then all of the flowers. And that is actually it. Okay, let's go to the back. And we'll have a bush. Maybe just one right down the middle. So a little something like that. We'll have the same thing on that side. And then we'll just have a couple melons. Like that. And then the rest of it will be our flowers. And then we'll do the same on that other side. And then we'll leave it off with the few other little decorations that we have. Alright. And I actually just noticed I missed a block right here, so I'll go ahead and fill that in with gravel. But we have that other garden space all done. So, that's pretty much it for all the main stuff. Let's go ahead and clear that. And I'm going to go ahead and do the grill next. And then we'll leave off with the table, like a little decoration with tables and chairs right here. So, let's do the grill. I'm going to go ahead and grab the furnaces. We'll also need some iron trap doors the cobblestone stairs, a cobblestone wall, and then cobblestone slabs, and then the full blocks of cobblestone, and I think that's it. So we'll start with the full blocks. We're just gonna go right in between these windows and place three like that. On top of that, we'll have these slabs, and then we'll have the stairs on each side. So just upside down like that. Do the same over here. Right down the middle, we'll fill this in with the furnaces. On top of these, we'll have the iron trap doors. And I'm not sure if we're going to be able to have the cobblestone wall. No, because it connects into the glass, which is really dumb. But that's just how it is. So we won't have the wall. And we'll just leave it like that with the grill. So now the final touch is just a table with some chairs right around here. So I'll go ahead and grab just some smooth quartz stairs. And then we'll also need some smooth quartz slabs. And then I'm going to be using the birch signs. And then some white banners. Oh yeah, and then some iron doors. 
So, we'll start with the smooth quartz stairs. You can pretty much just have the table wherever you want. You could also have more than one, but I'm just gonna leave it at one. You know what? I'll have two, why not? So I'll have maybe one right here. So what I'm gonna do is pretty much just place temporary stairs so that we could then have some upside down ones like this. And we're curving them all together. So that'll be one table there. And then we'll have another table, I think right here will be good. Or should we bring it in? We'll maybe bring it in right here so it's not too close to the deck. So there we go, we have the other table, we have that one there, I think those are good. So now, on each corner of the table, I just want a smooth quartz slab, so it's like that. We'll do the same over here. So that looks good. Behind each one of those slabs, we'll have an iron door. And then we'll crouch and have a white banner. And then on the slabs, we'll have a bird sign. I think I got them all. And now, I do want to add a few little extra decorations on these tables. So we'll grab the item frames. Maybe a lantern, probably also a flower pot too, and we'll just use uh, the blue orchid. And then we'll also need some food items. So I'm just going to be using some bread, and I don't know, maybe like a pumpkin pie, a cookie, and then maybe like a chicken. <laughs> it doesn't have to be anything specific. So I have a couple item frames like this. We'll have a flower pot. Fill that in. We'll fill in these item frames. And that will have the lantern. So when it's nighttime, there's a little bit of a light source out here, which is also something we should do for the deck as well. So if you want, you could go ahead and add some lanterns, maybe just like on the, uh, the railing here for the deck. That'll be up to you. You could also add lights all throughout the backyard. But anyway, I am actually going to be leaving it at that here for the backyard. I think this all looks pretty good. I think this looks a lot better than the original one. So, I'm pretty happy with it. And now I'm going to actually go through and just delete all the concrete, but I really don't need to show that. So I'm actually just going to end off the video right here. Alright guys, I'm going to leave it at that here for part 4 for this tutorial on how to build this mansion. If this helped you, be sure to please leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in part 5.